Welcome to our online service from Hill Street. It's great that you're able to join us today, wherever you're joining us from. Today begins our approach to Christmas, and we're in John's Gospel, looking today at who Jesus is, and all being well next week, looking at what Jesus does. We trust that God will meet with us in his word. We're delighted that we have the opportunity to meet in person in worship uh, this Sunday. It's uh, a delight to be able to do that. And we're planning to have five carol services, each one in church. And we hope that that way, over uh, the next couple of weeks, everybody who wants to get out to a carol service in Hill Street will be able to do so. And we wanted to have those here in church rather than in the hall. And that really restricts us to two services uh, on a Sunday. So that's why uh, we're doing things the way that we're doing them. Something to think about as we look uh, into the new year, we're planning to hold a couple of Christianity Explored courses in January, one in person and one online. And this is going to take a few evenings to explore the basic message of the gospel. Uh, who's it for? Well, it would be really good for you if you're investigating Christianity and you're wanting to have some of your questions answered in an informal setting. We, we really uh, think that Christian Explored is, is a fantastic uh, forum for being able to do that. It would be good for you if you're a Christian and you want to be sort of grounded in the basics. Uh, maybe you've not been following Jesus all that long and, and Christian Explored is just fantastic for you uh, to get that sort of framework into which uh, the, the gospel it fits. And then also it would be really helpful if you're talking to your friends about Jesus and you've somebody to invite along, then bringing them along would be absolutely great. So we really encourage you to think about Christian Explored in the new year. There'll be more information coming about that soon. Well, as we turn to worship, let's hear what the Bible says. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the word was God. And then it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Let us worship the God who came into our world. Let us worship God. Standing in the 
let us continue to worship as we pray together. Let us pray. Our loving God and Heavenly Father, we recognize that it is impossible for us to fully get our heads around the Christmas story, the wonder of the Incarnation. As Wesley put it, our, our God contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man. We reflect upon the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world, and we, we see beyond the sentimental images on the Christmas cards, and we realize that the Lord Jesus came as one who would be rejected, one who would be at points despised, one who would be, of course, crucified, put to death by our rebellious world. Lord, the only pure one to ever enter our fallen world, and yet this is what happened to him. And Lord, we recognize too that none of this was a surprise to you. You sent your Son into this world, knowing the very worst that we would do to him. Lord, we confess that we have not treated the Lord Jesus Christ as he should be treated. We have not put him first. We have not built our lives solely upon him. We've not treasured him as we ought. We have not spread his name abroad as we should. Lord, we recognize, therefore, that we have sinned and we have failed. But we thank you today that the Christmas story reminds us that the Lord Jesus Christ came for sinners and for failures. We thank you that he did not come to, to G us up, to show us an example, but he came to redeem, to substitute himself, to pay for our sin. And so we thank you that this Christmas time we can have hope because we have a Savior from sin, one who brings forgiveness, one who is full of mercy, one who restores our relationship with the Father. So, O oh Lord, we pray you will help us to treasure you this Christmas. We pray that you will help us to understand something more of what it is you have done for us and understanding. We pray that we might find our hearts overflowing with worship and our feet walking in obedience. So hear our prayer, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our Bible reading today is from John's Gospel, from chapter 1, and we're going to read the first uh, 18 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Amen. We trust that God will bless to us this reading from his word. We're going to hand over to Shelley now, and Shelley's going to bring us the next part in the great story of the Bible from beginning to everlasting. Do you like surprises? 
In today's story, there are lots and lots of surprises, and I am going to use some of the decorations on my Christmas tree to help us with today's story. The first decoration that we are going to use is very, very tiny. Can you see what it is? It's an angel. The Bible tells us the story of a young girl called Mary who lived in a town called Nazareth. And one day, an angel appeared to Mary. Wow, that would have been a big surprise. I can imagine that Mary was very, very afraid. But the angel said, do not be afraid. The angel had some very good news for Mary. The angel told Mary that she was going to have a baby. It would be a baby boy. And this baby boy, would be God's son. The angel told Mary that she was going to give her baby boy the name Jesus. This baby was going to be God's special rescuer, God's forever king. Mary was worried because she was engaged to be married to a man called Joseph. And she was worried that Joseph would be very, very unhappy when he heard this news. But Mary said to the angel, I am God's servant, let it be so. And in the Bible, we can read a song that Mary sang to praise God, a song about how great God is. Now Mary was right, Joseph wasn't very happy when he heard this news. But one night, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. That would have been a big surprise. And the angel told Joseph not to be afraid to marry Mary, because this little baby boy was God's own son, God's special rescuer, God's forever king. In our last episode, we heard of an announcement made by Caesar Augustus, which said that everyone had to go to their hometown to be counted. Joseph was part of the family of King David. He was a descendant of King David. And King David's family had come from Bethlehem. So that is where Mary and Joseph had to travel to, to be counted. It was a very, very long journey, especially when it was very close to the time that Mary's baby would be born. But this didn't happen by accident. Because many, 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 many years ago, one of God's special messengers had said that God's special rescuer, his forever king, would be born where? In Bethlehem. When Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, there was a problem. It was so, so busy that they couldn't find anywhere to stay. The only place that they could find was a room where animals usually stayed. I can't imagine that it would smell very nice, but that is where they stayed. And that is where baby Jesus was born. When Jesus was born, he didn't have a fancy cot to lie in or a fancy bed. In fact, he lay in a manger. He lay in the box where the animal's food would usually be kept, where the animals would eat from. This was a very special day because this was exactly what God had promised to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to King David. And God keeps his promises. His rescuer, his forever king had arrived. But so far, only Mary and Joseph knew anything about it. But that was going to change. There were some shepherds looking after their sheep in the fields near Bethlehem that night. All was quiet. All was dark. But suddenly there was a big surprise. An angel appeared and the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. This very night in Bethlehem, a saviour has been born. He is Christ the Lord. 
And the angel told them to go to Bethlehem where they would find the baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. But there was another surprise coming because suddenly the sky was filled with angels singing praises to God. I can imagine that the shepherds were amazed and off they hurried to Bethlehem where they found the baby with his mother and father and they worshipped him. In those days, shepherds weren't seen as very important. In fact, people looked down on them a bit and didn't think they were all that special. But of course, they were special to God. And they were the very, very first people to hear that God's special rescuer, his forever king, had arrived. Maybe that was God's way of saying that even if you don't feel very important or very special, this forever king came for you. There are many, many names in the Bible used to describe Jesus, but I think this one is my favourite. This one is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God has come to live among us. And this is the message of Christmas. Jesus, God's perfect son, came to earth as a tiny baby to live among us and to rescue us from sin. This Christmas might feel a bit different. There will be lots of things that we are not able to do. There will be people that we are not able to spend time with. Our whole church family cannot gather together all at the same time in the way that we are used to doing at Christmas time. But this has not changed. The message of Christmas has not changed. Emmanuel, God is still with us. Have you trusted in God's special rescuer, his forever king, to rescue you? from sin. The shepherds weren't the only people to visit Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. But the other visitors, they had a bit further to travel and their visit took place a little bit later. Who were they? Where did they come from? Come back next week to find out.
think about who is Jesus. We're looking at John chapter 1 and the first 14 verses, but with this question, who is Jesus? Now, 2020 has been a year like no other year. The outbreak of COVID-19 in early spring shook the world. And in the midst of this pandemic, we've had to become familiar with lots of new terms. Social distancing, bubbles, hands, face, and space, lockdown, circuit breakers, the R rate, and of course, Zoom. I imagine before March, not many of us knew what Zoom was. And 2020 has also provided us with lots of great one-liners. I wonder if you can guess who said these. Control the virus, stay alert. I have the best body they have ever seen. Incredible. I am as fit as a butcher's dog. They've never seen a body kill the virus like mine. And stop the count. I'm sure you can guess who said most of those. Now, all in all, 2020 has provided us with much to talk about. And I'm sure this Christmas at the Christmas dinner table, we will have much to talk about. Or if we're on Zoom for Christmas with one another, there's plenty of conversation starters. And that's not to mention Brexit at all. But I want to add a few other quotes today for us to discuss, for us to think and talk about. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Direct quotes from a man called Jesus, all recorded in John's gospel. So my question today for us is, who is Jesus? You see, Matthew and Luke, they include nativity information and the genealogy. But John here, John wants to peel back the account and explain the meaning behind it all. So what we want to do this Christmas is to zoom in on who Jesus is. And it is my aim that in doing this today that we might see who Jesus is and that we may be moved to receive him, to receive him as our saviour, as our Lord and as our God and as our all-surpassing treasure. And if you have already received him, it is my aim that you will embrace and treasure him, that you will delight and follow him more than you ever have before. So Jesus, was he just a Jewish lunatic who lived 2,000 years ago? A moral teacher? A Middle Eastern fictional character? Or an irrelevance? You see, today we have only got two options. Either Jesus was a bare-faced liar, or he is the only Son of God. That he is the Emmanuel, God with us, that he is our Messiah. And I want to show you today that the real Jesus is the one that you should be living your life for. So let's explore this together. John wants us to see four things here in his gospel as he starts his gospel. He wants us to see that Jesus is the eternal creator, that Jesus is the light bringer, that Jesus is the life giver, and that Jesus is the God dweller. So let's step through these. Firstly, Jesus is the eternal creator. What John is trying to do here is he's trying to make it blatantly obvious the identity of who Jesus is right from the beginning of his gospel. It's almost like he's doing a background check for us. He's showing us Jesus' heritage. He's showing us that the Bible is one big story about one person, and that is Jesus. So what does he do? He takes us right back to Genesis chapter 1, and he uses the same words that that begin Genesis to begin his gospel. In the beginning. And what John is doing is he's telling us that Jesus was right there in the beginning. He's going to great lengths to show us that Jesus, although born in Bethlehem as a human, also existed for all eternity as God. He's trying to point out to us that we must not miss this crucial fact that Jesus has always been. He is the Word, the Logos a term packed full of meaning. And he's trying to explain that that Jesus was the very word of God. 
That means that everything has been made by him and through him. He is the agent of creation and the one who holds this entire world together. There was never a time when Jesus did not exist. He was right there from the beginning. He has always been the creator who has always existed. Outside of time, he was there face to face with the Father. So in other words, we the reader need to listen up. John saying to us, do you see here who you're dealing with? This just isn't a guy called Jesus who's born in some back stable or cave in a town called Bethlehem. He is the eternal creator. He is the Lord. So John says, pay attention. The eternal creator is here. Then he says to us that Jesus is the light bringer. We can see it in verse 5. Now, a question that has puzzled me for a long time is, why on earth someone designed Christmas lights in a loop? You know, you know the disaster that it is. You, you, you start to rule out your Christmas lights, and you think to yourself, why, why did somebody not just make these in a straight line? Why did they not just start at one point and end at another? What, what is the purpose of this loop? And then you have to spend hours and hours trying to untangle this. Well, do you know the actual reason why we have lights at Christmas is because of Jesus? It's because of what we hear in Isaiah chapter 9, this great prophecy that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. You see, traditionally it is because of Jesus that our towns and that our countrysides are a rich tapestry of light at Christmas. And John is telling us that Jesus comes as the light. He comes into the darkness, into the darkness that has descended upon us since the Garden of Eden, the whole way through the Old Testament. And here comes the one who is the light. The invader of the darkness is a baby boy, the eternal light, God sending his son, and as it were, he's repeating the creation phrase, let there be light. And this light, John tells us, enlightens everyone in verse 9. This year, we all know what it is like to live in darkness. This year has been a dark year. It has been incredibly murky, and the world has had the shadow of death upon it. But Christmas, Christmas is all about God sending His Son into this darkness, into this dreary world to rescue sinners, to rescue sinners like you and me who are hiding in our own little caves, our caves of darkness, our caves of death. So imagine it like this. Jesus stands at the entrance to our cave and He could decide to totally destroy us, but instead Jesus comes to the entrance of our cave. And he says to us, come, come out into the light, for I have come to save you. Will you receive me as your God, as your substitute, as your treasure? You see, my death will count for your death and my righteousness for your righteousness. You can have eternal life if you'll come out of this darkness and walk with me in the light. Jesus comes to invade our darkness, to rescue us. He comes to save us. And today, can we see that we need him? Because in darkness, there is no hope. Whenever we live in darkness, we know what it's like. There's no safety there. It's an uneasy time for us. We are anxious. We are uncertain. We feel isolated and alone. We feel vulnerable. No one likes to dwell in darkness. And Jesus, he's the light of the world. He comes to vanquish the darkness. He comes to save us out of the darkness, out of the darkness of our lives. And he comes to bring us hope and to bring us life. It's a little like this. Imagine us sitting in a dark room and, and Jesus comes in and he flicks on the light. He is the light. And we're all now in the light, even if we don't want to be. And the light exposes us. So our natural response may be to recoil from it, to run and to hide. And Jesus, he stands in the middle of this room and he's looking at each of us with a look of love. 
and with an invitation to life. He's asking us to come out of this dark room and to follow Him. The question is, will we accept it? Will we accept Him? Will we stand up and walk with Jesus? Or will we stand up and will we usher Him out of the room, flick off the lights, and wallow in death and darkness again? Today, please come. Come and accept Jesus' invitation and walk in the light. He is the light bringer. And he's also, John says, the life giver. You see, this Christmas, I think that we may turn a vaccine into our life giver. We may see it as our life giver, as our savior. And it is great that we have a vaccine. That is great news for us. But it is not the best news. You see, the best news is that there is only one person that can bring us life, eternal life, and that is Jesus. John wants to show us that verse 4. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. Verse 12. To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John is showing us that Jesus is the light because he is the life. And in John 20, verse 31, he says this. These things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So today, if my message is going to be faithful to John's purpose in this gospel, my goal must be to help you believe in the Son of God, that you may have eternal life. So what John is trying to say to us, in other words, is this, that we have got two great problems, that spiritually we are dead, and because we're spiritually dead, we're therefore spiritually blind. But here he says that Jesus is the remedy to both of these problems, that he has the life that we need, and that this life becomes the light that we need. Again, John brings us back to Genesis and it's, his, it's a, a rehearsal again of what God says whenever he, he speaks and says that he breathes life into Adam. Here comes Jesus, the one who will breathe life into us, spiritual life. So if you want to live forever, if you want to enjoy the new earth, then today you must repent and believe in Jesus. The one who tells us in John's gospel that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus, John says, is the eternal creator. He is the light bringer. He is the life giver. And lastly, Jesus is the God dweller. We all know how frustrating it can be when someone gives us instructions from a distance. Perhaps you have been decorating the Christmas tree and someone keeps pointing out to you that that you've got a big hole here and a big gap there and you need to fill it with this and put that there and do this. And you get increasingly frustrated because they just sit there and they don't do anything. Or perhaps you're building some furniture and someone in the family is casually looking on saying, oh, I wouldn't do it like that. Yet they never get up to actually help you. Maybe it's a passenger in your car telling you how you should drive. Maybe it's at a football game when you can hear some middle-aged man who's had just a few too many mince pies telling the 21-year-old footballer on the pitch how he should be conducting himself, how he would play so much better. It's frustrating, isn't it? Bystanders who are apparent experts, but don't actually do anything about it. But when it comes to Jesus, he doesn't stand at the sidelines shouting instructions to us. He doesn't stand idly by. He comes to join right in with us. This is a great wonder, a great mystery for us. The incarnation And in our passage today, we have one of the most weighty statements in all of Scripture. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And this means that Jesus really took on a human nature, that he became a human in order to save sinners, that he took our flesh so that he could take our sin. As Hebrews says, he can sympathize with us in every way. So Jesus really did hunger. He did thirst. 
He ate and he drank and he slept and he felt tiredness and pain and he wept and he rejoiced. Born a little baby who cried, who needed changed. The eternal one who was now in his mother's arms. And everything we are and everything that we believe as Christians depends upon this today. That Jesus Christ is God and that he is man. Fully God and fully human. You see, Jesus had to be fully man. Otherwise, he could not save humanity. He was the second Adam, the perfect man. And Jesus had to be fully God. Otherwise, he could not be born without sin. There was no other way. So from the throne, Jesus descends to the trough. And from glory, Jesus descends to this earth, and then he will descend further to the grave. From exaltation, Jesus descends to humiliation. From perfection, Jesus descends to brokenness. From heaven, he descends to earth. And here he comes, dressed, ready for work. You know what it's like if you ask someone to come around your house to give you a hand. Maybe it's a Uh, changing uh, something in the car, doing some mechanic work, or maybe you just want some manual labor done outside. Well, if the the person turns up wearing fancy clothes, you know that there's no hope that they're going to help you. If they're dressed in a suit, there's no way that they're prepared to get a spade or a shovel and begin to get stuck into some hard labor. But if they come in their work clothes, if they come in an old pair of jeans and an old top, an old hoodie or an old coat and a pair of wellies or a pair of work boots, then you know that they're ready for it. They're ready to get stuck in. And it's exactly the same here with Jesus. He doesn't come in some other form. He doesn't come dressed in in some other clothes. He comes in our nature, in our likeness. He comes dressed ready for work. He comes dressed ready to save his people. The God-man, the one who would come here and who would dwell with us. How incredible is that? It's an image here that John's using from the Old Testament. It's a, a phrase that Jesus, God, or God sorry, would tabernacle with his people, that he would dwell with his people. And in the Old Testament, it's in the form of the tent. But here, It's in the form of his only son. God dwelling with his people. What other king would do this? What other king would come to rescue his people? Again, to repeat the phrase from Genesis, this is bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. The bridegroom came from heaven to seek and to save his bride, the church. This is our God. This is our King. This is our Savior. This is Jesus. The eternal Word. The light in the darkness. He is life in the midst of death. He is God in flesh. And all of this, all of this John says, so that we could enjoy Him so that we could know our sins forgiven, so that we could be rescued and that we could be born again as children of God. To all who would receive him, he would give the right to become children of God. So as we close today, who is this man called Jesus? John says that he is the eternal creator, that he is the light bringer, that he is the life giver, and that he is the God dweller. But my question for you is, who is Jesus for you? You see, is he just a list of these distant facts? Or is he the Savior? Is he your Savior? See, Jesus came to save people like you and like me. He came to save shepherds and school teachers. He came to save bricklayers and bankers. He came to save carpenters and cooks. He came for everyone, for all who would believe. When Jesus walked this earth, many people saw him, but many people did not recognize him for who he was. And whenever Jesus was on this earth, many people walked with him, but many did not wake and understand who he was. Today, I trust 
that each person that is listening to this will not miss the real Jesus this Christmas, that you will see him, the eternal creator, the bringer of life and of light, our Lord who came to save us. And today, if you are not in his light, then you are hiding from him in the darkness. And if you're not trusting him as your, for your life, then you are choosing death. Jesus came and he dwelt amongst us to bring us into God's family. And the invitation is extended to you today. He asks, will you come? Will you receive him? And if you will, he gives you the right to become part of his family, to have your sins forgiven, and to enjoy eternal life. So please trust him this Christmas. Repent and believe in him. Follow him for the rest of your life. Why would you not? What a wonderful, beautiful, powerful Savior we have, full of grace forgiveness and love. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you today that we get to hear who your son really is, that the, he is the eternal creator, that he is the one who comes to bring us light and to bring us life. He is God dwelling with us. We praise you for all of these things. And we ask that today you would help us to respond appropriately, that we would bow at your feet and that we would worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords, Emmanuel, God with us, our Savior, our Rescuer, our Redeemer, and our friend. We pray that you will help us to love you today. And we ask this all in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Today, if you have been listening to this message and you're thinking a little bit more about Christianity and what it means to become a Christian, please do get in touch with us. You can contact us via our website, through our email address, or through some of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Well, let's take a moment to pray together and to remember especially the needs of others. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come together to bring our own needs and the needs of others to you. Thank you that our prayers are not in vain. We pray for those, O oh Lord, who particularly need your help. We remember those who are dealing with illness. We pray for those who are in hospital. We pray for families who are concerned, many not able to see loved ones in hospital or in care homes. We pray for those who are finding life particularly difficult. We pray for those who've been bereaved, especially at this more difficult time at Christmas. Lord, we ask that for all those who particularly need your touch just now, you might come and reveal yourself to be the God who is full of compassion and the God who is able and willing to be a helper. We continue, O oh Lord, to pray for our community. We thank you for all the services that make our community work. Many of our uh, church family and many of our friends involved in these things. We think of our hospitals and our schools and our businesses. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless those who work in them. And Lord, that you will help our society to hold together just now. We pray for government and those responsible for rule. We pray that you will grant them help in all the responsibilities that are upon them just now. We ask for efficiency for those responsible for vaccine rollout. We pray for wisdom as Brexit is, is navigated. We pray for humility in, in, in amongst our leaders, that they may know that the answers are not within themselves, but that they may call upon you. We ask you, O oh Lord, for our church in these days, 
Lord, the great emptiness of our world is surely manifest just now. And we pray that the hope of the gospel may shine brightly. Strengthen your people over this Christmas period. Build your church, we ask too. May those who, at this point, who do not know you, hear in a fresh way the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And hearing, we pray that they may believe. So hear our prayers, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>